The Edge at 11 starts now. Tonight on The Edge, Dearborn's mayor taking a stand mm -hmm. as he turns down a meeting with President Biden's campaign manager. He insisted this is not a time for politics and called for a ceasefire in Gaza. Fox News' Jessica Dupnack explains. Think about it. Democrats turning down a meeting with President Biden's national campaign manager. If that's not sending a message, I don't know what it is. But after sitting down with the mayor of Dearborn, he says that is exactly the point. You know, what do I tell my residents, my residents who have lost loved ones overseas? Dearborn's mayor says his decision to bail on a meeting with President Biden's campaign manager reflects the sentiment of the Arab American community on the Israel Hamas war. This is not the time to talk about elections. This is the time to ask and demand for an immediate ceasefire. It was all set for Friday afternoon. About a dozen local Arab American leaders, including Dearborn Mayor Abdullah Hamoud and State Representative for Dearborn Al Abbas Farhat. I couldn't get myself to want to sit down with that individual. From Biden's camp, Julie Chavez Rodriguez was supposed to lead the meeting. A source familiar with the meeting tells us this was part of a tour starting last fall in key battleground states to talk election strategy with diverse groups. Right now is a time for us to hold them accountable to the promises they made in 2020 when they said the Arab American community, the Muslim American community will have a seat at the table and we don't have that seat right now. This sentiment could spill over into the upcoming election. Remember, President Biden won Michigan over Trump by 154,000 votes. There are currently 300,000 Arab Americans in Michigan, according to the census. State Rep Farhat says 80% typically swing Democrat. If you polled them, many of them will tell you this is their number one issue. If the president's policymakers decide they want to talk ceasefire, it's a meeting the mayor would consider. If there's a meaningful conversation to be had, where you're not just here to listen and then walk away for a photo op, we'll gladly take that conversation. The meeting that never was was actually part of a series of meetings between Biden's campaign and folks here in Michigan, specifically the Hispanic and black communities. Reporting in Dearborn, Jessica Dupnack on The Edge. Well, another emotional day in court in the trial of Jennifer Crumbly, the mother of the Oxford shooter. Prosecutors sifted through countless text messages trying to prove she ignored her son's mental crisis. And the shooter revealed he was paranoid hearing voices and wanted to call 911, but he was scared that his parents would be upset. Like I hear people talking to me and see someone in the distance and then corrected the spelling of the word distance. It's April 4th, 11.56. Correct. Okay. Yeah. The shooter said, I actually asked my dad to take me to the doctor yesterday, but he just gave me some pills and told me to, quote, suck it up. He then says, like I am mentally and physically dying. Meanwhile, the defense says Crumbly had no way of knowing her son would go on a deadly rampage. She even texted her son after believing he was the shooter. Do you know you can talk to us and we won't judge? Did she respond to the message that he sent her at 1242? Yes. What did she write? She said, I love you too. Okay. The then says, uh, immediately after that, you okay? Then four minutes later, she says, Ethan, don't do it. And this is the first time a parent has been tried for manslaughter in connection with a mass shooting by his or her child. Crumbly plans to testify in her defense later in the trial. Court resumes Monday, 9 a.m., and her husband, James, will be tried separately at a later date. Rain and mild temperatures causing a deluge across Metro Detroit. Flooding was so bad that, look at this, a school bus got stuck in the water. It happened in Rouge Park in the area of Spinoza and Sawyer. I would definitely tell somebody not to cross it. And, um, you know, the next time it's like this, you know, I might buy, bring some of those cones and at least put up one on each year. Now, emergency crews actually carried the students from the bus in over three feet of water. Nobody was hurt. More mild temperatures and melting ice are on the way. Weather Authority Stephanie Mee joins us now with a look at your weekend and when things will finally dry out. For sure, yeah. So we're not looking at huge amounts of rain as we head through the next couple of days. Uh, we're also looking at a lot of melting, too. So that's what's also kind of giving us those uh, flooding conditions here across southeast Michigan. Numbers right now, mainly in the upper 30s still. So we're not going to budge too much in terms of overnight lows. We might lose a few more degrees, but nothing near freezing for us here. 37, Detroit 37 for those in Ann Arbor as well. 
well. 35 up near Pontiac and then 36 degrees up near parts of Flint. So not bad as we approach 11 o'clock, if not closer to midnight. Later on tonight, we should eventually start to see the showers move out. You do notice a bit of light returns up near northern parts of our viewing area. So closer to, say, Auburn Hills, the Rochester area. Areas north, though, picking up on a good bulk of that steady, lighter shower activity. Fog will start to settle in as well overnight. Not enough to warrant a dense fog advisory, but we could be dealing with very limited visibility for a lot of spots. So just keep that in mind. If you're an early morning driver tomorrow morning, cloud cover holds on strong. So unfortunately, we're not looking at a whole lot of sunshine either heading into this weekend. Notice here by tomorrow evening, if not through the day on Sunday, we could be talking our next chance for some precip. So something to keep on your mind, especially if you have plans that take you into early Sunday morning. Otherwise, early tomorrow morning, fog in play. Temps will be in the mid 30s. We warm to the lower 40s tomorrow and we should see a milder day, cloudy day, a lot of melting still happening for those that still have snow on the ground. Otherwise, I do think we're mainly dry. Temperatures will warm their way into the low 40s as we head through the afternoon and we actually remain in the 40s through the end of the weekend, possibly looking at our next system though, arriving during the early morning hours come Sunday. Any plans to head out to San Fran to see the Lions play against the 49ers? Temperatures, huge difference there. Upper 60s and I do think you'll squeeze out some sunshine there. This system here earlier was tracking a little further south, so we were kind of getting the back edge of it and getting kind of a glancing blow by this system. Now it's bringing it a little further north, so we could see maybe a little more precip out of it, maybe a light wintry mix, plain old showers at times. We'll see kind of how that system shakes out for right now, and then our second system arriving on Tuesday. Otherwise, temperatures in the 40s through the end of the week. All right, Stephanie, thanks. And before all that ice melted, uh, or will melt, there was some fun out there tonight. Detroit police and firefighters dropped the puck in Clark, Clark Park. Having a great time, and the yeah. people are watching it, too, having a great time. The annual hockey game is for a, a wonderful cause. Fox News' Camilla Miri takes us to the ice. Detroit firefighters making quite the entrance to Clark Park Friday night. It's fun for us to come out and be super serious about playing hockey all the time, and that's it. A Motor City tradition. 15th annual Winter Classic Detroit Police against Detroit Fire. A charity event that raises money for Clark Park's youth hockey programs. I've been doing it since I joined the department, so it's a fun time. Outdoor game, can't get a better environment. Out of the deep freeze, temps in the high 30s. Mother Nature providing the perfect backdrop for nighttime hockey. Yeah, we had a little stretch here. We didn't think we were going to be able to pull it off, but it all came together. So just want to thank everyone involved. The guys on the ice all pretty much say the same thing about the sport. I've been playing my whole life. Uh, what is that, 25 years now? Uh, most of us, that's how we are. You know, we've been doing it this whole time. So. And those who aren't playing are cheering on their team. All our friends and family come. And we, we really enjoy having them out here. We're just here for a good time. You know, every year it's something we get to look forward to. And uh, it, it's, it's just a good thing to do. In Detroit, Camille and Mary on the edge.